All right, so now what we have here is a scenario where this plays automatically. So I want to take that out of the scene. Good, doesn't play automatically. He doesn't do anything at this point. He's not running up, he's not doing anything. I can push him out of the way, basically. Okay, that's fine. He should clean out everything that it has on it before you start thinking about an animation script or that triggers animations. There's no doubt about that. All right, so let's write a new JavaScript. And this one is going to be called trigger trigger enemy animations. And what I want to do is put that on the node that has animations. Okay. But now we're going to start learning that that's that philosophy. You know, you don't have to follow it so rigidly because I'm going to start using this one to and use the child node scripting technology that I showed you back in a couple videos ago, how to put childs into it so that you can use the childs as reference to where things are at in the actual scene. All right, so let's kind of look at this. This one's a little bit more complex than your normal script. So I would go get something highly caffeinated to drink at this point. Let's pull up the script. There we go. All right, let's start out small. And I'm going to be using a lot of the random input from that random number out there. So there's a random number being calculated. It's called random chance. So what script in here was it that I used random chance? Well, that was trigger render. Okay, so now I can think, well, now I could steal some code from here. Because I like this, but again, it's it's a lot of locations. I mean, this is relying, this script gets put on blast. There's a script here, there's a script there. That's a mess. So what I wanna do is start writing a script that condenses more scripts together. This little bit of code is a good start. So I'm gonna start by pasting that in. It's got my else statement, it's got everything else. <laughs> Get it, I guess it wasn't funny, but it was funny to a coder. All right, so here we go. Uh, we got van random integer, and I need a target, so I need a veritable target. And I think I'll teach you how to script that a little bit better too, so let's go like this. Right now, Let's state this. Let's keep it simple. There we go. I just want to be able to trigger the animation. Okay, and I want to show you the difference between play and the other kind of tween that we worked on in the previous example of the the arm that recalculates back, it's like a robot arm. Okay, in this case, we're going to use the animation period play. And that animation is called fire mid. So, now, when a random number gets calculated greater than seven, it's going to calculate this, this an, or trigger this animation. So an animation has no control. You, once it triggers, it's the length of the animation, okay? I'll save. So let's test that out. So if I get too near, the animation should trigger. And there's the animation. Very simple, good. All right, now, how would I trigger the other animation? Well, I would probably trigger that one 
based upon a raycast because if I'm closer to a character, it's going to have to trigger. So this is where I start bringing in children, and this is where it starts getting complex. Uh, what I want to do is declare two private individual variables, so private variable, and I'm going to call this one blast, because later on I'm going to be using it, so why not put it in here. Okay, and I want to declare another one, so I'm just going to copy this one and paste it down here. And this one, I'm going to call shield because I can wrap my head around the whole idea that there's a magical shield out there. And that's what this thing is. This is the shield. Okay. So I could probably call this shield. And that's what's doing a lot of the ray casting right now. So I wouldn't want to do several different things ray case casting at the same time. You could, but I'm going to declare it that it's going to be the same object that I'm relying on to trigger the damage. All right, now, here's where the fun starts. I need something in here called um, my, pri my private function start. So to show you that, I showed you this child control. Now you can see the, you know, I, this is why I write so many examples because I can start pulling code very quickly. So here's this, this little bit of snippet of code, private variable blade that I showed you back when it gets transversed into this where I need to pull in two objects. And that is blast and shield. And now we look at the hierarchy. Well, blast is located under shield, soldier, meshes, blast. Blast. Duh. And the other one is just located under shield. All right, so there's our start. We start bringing in these assets of the character. Incidentally, you can also use this to bring in non-children nodes too. Like if I had something like uh, something I wanted on the player, I can declare that player or orient and bring it right into my script. And that eliminates all these transform nodes that I keep having to drag over here every time. That's, that's a little, but now I have to rely on naming conventions very well. All right, go on to the next video where I can show you some more.